Donovan, a.k.a. Young Crip. And Alan, talking about movies, they may be best friends, but they always disagree. Donovan, a.k.a. Young Crip. And Alan, i seen that. Uh, from Twitter and Young Crip TV on YouTube. So, we did a podcast uh, a few weeks ago now. Uh, on Baby yes. Driver. And mm-hmm. while we were doing that, I had brought up, uh, the fundamentals of caring. And I'd asked if you'd seen it. And I thought this would be an interesting one to talk with you about. Yeah, that's actually pretty much right up my alley, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, you always reminded me so much of Paul Rudd. I thought it'd be, be it'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah. No, that's exactly. People tell me all the time, you're like the, uh, Paul Rudd, if, if he didn't knock. <laughs> <laughs> so have you seen uh, The Fundamentals of Karen? I have. It's actually uh, it's a really interesting film because I know that it probably didn't do well critically, I believe. I, I never looked into it. Uh, I think it just did a little uh, average at best. But uh, coming from the perspective of somebody who has that kind of a life, uh, it was really well done. It was extremely well done, and I, I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's one of those uh coming to age stories with a bad mentor that mm-hmm. I really enjoy. These indie coming of age movies. I don't. Did you ever see the Way Way Back? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. That's another one that is similar to this. That it just yeah. it they're just. They just feel authentic when you watch it. Like you feel like, oh, these are real people going through real experiences and it's, it's heartbreaking and it's fun and it's happy and it's sad. And it's not, it's not just one note, you know, that they're hitting over and over. It's just kind of showing you their life. Exactly. Like I, I love films that will take me on a roller coaster of emotions because that's how you know you did something good. I yeah. feel like that to me, that's the definition of art is like, Making you feel like this thing made me feel. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, this is one of my top, like, favorite movies to watch. It was, this is the second time I've seen it. Um, but, and so that I think it wasn't quite as fun the second time because there's some moments where they're like playing with your emotions, like when Paul Rudd pretends mm-hmm. to have forgotten the pills that, really doesn't mean anything if you know he doesn't hadn't forgotten the pills but stuff the everything else the moments where they're just enjoying each other is so much fun to watch yeah no i completely agree like that stuff is really the the more authentic part of the of the overall experience that that's the one thing i guess i was afraid they wouldn't be able to nail down per se because uh when when you do have somebody who cares for you in that limelight as a caregiver, it it is uh you you do have to develop a friendship of sorts if you want it to be well, but it also has to borderline that like you you can't become uh, too invested. Yeah, you know, and they mm-hmm. played they played that realm very well. I feel because they there was those moments where he was uh, Paul Rudd's character uh, was. Pushing that boundary a little bit, and you could, and you could ex- tell why there was that, you know, due to his past and uh, whatnot. I agreed. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. So the story is, it's about Trevor, who has, was it uh, MS? What would he have? Uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. But yeah. Okay, and so he was in a wheelchair. So him and his mom were originally in the UK. They move to the States uh, for her new job, and he is getting adjusted with a new caretaker. And Paul Rudd is now working as a new... He, he's become a caretaker, and this is going to be his first job. He used to be a writer, and he comes, and he goes to the training and shows up at the house to work with Trevor, but he doesn't know anything about Trevor. And Trevor is... A jerk isn't really the right word. 
I don't know how how would you describe his personality? Uh, he's he's definitely an asshole. Yeah, I'm not afraid. To, I, I'll tell him. I'll tell him like it is. He's an asshole. <laughs> but like, <laughs> again, nobody wants to call the person in the wheelchair a dick. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I think the thing is. Go ahead. Uh, the the thing with him is, it's like he, he's not. You can understand why he's a dick. Yeah, like <laughs> uh, it's not just an asshole for being an asshole. It's a uh, his way of coping with. Which, no, I get that. I totally understand that. Yeah. Do you, so, one of the things that I've noticed on your, your Twitter is you Mm -hmm. really like to make people uncomfortable. Is that, would you say that's accurate? Uh, very, very accurate. (laughs) Um, do you ever find that your sense of humor will sometimes make it so where people feel overly comfortable to make fun of you for, being in a wheelchair. Does that make sense? Yeah, actually, it really, that is a good observation because it, it definitely is, I feel. Uh, it's something I've noticed a little bit more as of lately because there, there's, there's a, a good way to go about things and then just uh, what I could only describe as being socially retarded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, Wow, you really, is that like how, how you want to approach this? That's like the other day, uh, somebody in my stream when I was streaming was just like, Hey man, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And, and uh, I could laugh about it because you know what? It, it's totally fine. I understand the, it's not coming from a place of like anger yeah. and like hatred. Mm-hmm. It's just, a, and it's, you know, wanting to learn. However, there's a right way to ask things and a wrong way. I feel. Yeah. And uh, that can be a lot, like you said, I tend to joke around a lot and say some pretty outlandish shit. So I have to take those moments with a, I guess, a grain of salt and realize that I I need to be patient and also practice what I preach when it comes to being uh, a bit mature as well. Mm. (laughs) What do you, what are questions people ask you that are probably the most ignorant? Uh, I, I think the most common one I get every time is, does your dick still work? Yeah. I get that one a lot. And my response to that at, every time is, unless you want to, please don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you have no reason to ask. Yeah. Well, no, that's <laughs> that's extremely inappropriate to ask anybody. <laughs> like, right. you wouldn't... It's, it's so fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Is that, is that like friends or is that like strangers will just walk up to you and ask you that? See, that's the thing. Like if we're, if we're starting to get close mm-hmm. and like I'm chummy with you, dude, f- feel free. Ask me whatever, dude. Like it's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm not like a prude. Yeah. But if you're just like a, a dude on, on Twitter, it's just like, Hey man, uh, it's your dick work. It's a little weird. Yeah. It's a little off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's fair. What do you think? So, when in the movie, when Trevor and what was Paul Rudd's character's name, uh, Ben meet up with Dot, yeah. who is played by, uh, Selena Gomez, that's actually mm-hmm. one of the questions she asks. Does that yes. feel, does that feel accurate to your experience? Yes. No, that's completely, uh, that's okay because there's also that like underlying tone of flirting. Mm-hmm. Like you could, you could get that. And, uh, more girls need to do that. <laughs> that's that's totally how I feel about that. So that, they're okay. It's okay because they're women. Gotcha. Your stance is more women <laughs> asking that, less dudes asking you that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. So his uh, uh a big part of Trevor's story in the movie <laughs> is he was kind of always confined to the house, and he kind of had these. Yes. I don't know if it. The movie puts forth that it was kind of his dream to get out and check out all this stuff. To me, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. Um, like it seemed more like it was something he was interested in because he was bored more than he actually wanted to see the biggest pit in America. Uh, yeah. but any, either way, uh, Ben sees it and it's like, you know what? You need to get out of the house. Let's go. Like, let's go do this thing. But he's really yeah. afraid of leaving. And, uh, 
I think rightfully so because his mom has kind of instilled this fear into him. Like you have to, I have to protect you. I have to Mm -hmm. keep you safe. And like, Mm -hmm. I know growing up, anytime I did something dangerous, my mom's like, if you do that, you're going to break your leg or (laughs) you're going to, you know, crack your head open or you're going to do whatever, like any, any little thing. And so now I have that plane in the back of my head. Anytime I do something, I'm like, Oh, if I do this thing, it's going to really hurt me. I'm going to end up, you know, broken or damaged or something. And so like, I can't imagine having that, that track that, uh, just playing in the back of your head your whole life of like, you know, you can't leave. Otherwise you're going to die. And so right. his willingness just to sit at home and not ever do anything makes sense. And like, I, I thought they did really well of showing that. No, they absolutely did. Uh, as somebody who really has been experiencing that more so the last uh, year and a half, two years, it's a very accurate representation of what that's like because luckily growing up I did have uh, a more good balance of my mom wanting me to do the things I needed to do in order to feel like a person, like a human being. She was totally cool with me going out, doing things, and, you know, there was obviously that, that mom thing of, like, oh, no. I Like, there was definitely the, uh, what if this goes wrong? Mm-hmm. And I get that now, too. Like, uh, but at the end of the day, if I feel like I can pull it off, I'll, I'll definitely push through that. Yeah. But, uh, again, that's just kind of life in, in general. Like, people have a comfort zone. Yeah. Everybody does. Mm-hmm. Uh, with disabled people, I feel like it's, it's a lot more comfort than it is, uh, because of that routine, like they mentioned in the movie, his routine. Uh, I, I definitely have that as well. Mm. As, <laughs> uh, especially when it comes to just being comfortable. I think I depended on it a little too much because the moment something fucks up that routine, I do feel off. Mm. I do feel like things are a bit weird. Yeah. But I can get through it. It's not like a crippling anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that's normal too, you know? Like when yeah. I have, if I get in a routine, like, you know, I get up and I have a cup of coffee at the same time and I do this and I do that. If I don't do that after I'm so used to it for however long I've been doing it straight, you know, it's like, I feel anxious almost like, Oh, something is off. Something's not right. Like I'm just Mm -hmm. out of whack, you know? Like, I don't think it's like, I think it's just a a human thing, but I think when it comes to people with disabilities, it's, it's easy to place extra importance on things like that. Like, Oh, it's, we have to. So, uh, my daughter, she has down syndrome. And so Mm -hmm. we, it's easy to, to place like, heavy importance on things where, um, how, what am I trying to say? Where it's like, it's not necessarily better. It's just easier to manage everything else. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, of course. Um, it just makes more sense. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I get what you're saying. What did you think about the scene where, so <clears throat> in the, in the movie, Ben ends up taking Trevor out on this road trip to go and see all these lame roadside attractions. Like that was what Trevor wanted to see. What did you think about the scene where they get to the, the bovine fact or farm and on the second floor, they have the biggest cow, but they don't have uh, a wheelchair ramp. They don't have any accessibility. (laughs) So that scene is like my social nightmare. (laughs) I, I hate that shit. So, because it is a, it's a common thing. It's common enough for me to have experienced it, mm-hmm. that now it's just a fear. It's <laughs> because my mom and my friends are usually like, exactly like Paul Rudd in that situation yeah. of like, why, why not? Why don't you have these things? Yeah. Why isn't it accessible? And me, I'm like, hey, it's, it's no big deal, dude. We can just, I'll find something else. And my friends and my mom are just, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> this dude's got some answers to, and I'm like, oh my god, no. I didn't, it's not that big of a fucking deal, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
but to to be in that situation and be the one that like you're the victim. I'm like I don't feel like I'm a victim. Yeah, it's it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's very accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they end up. Paul Rudd like berates the guy at this small little farm for not having. I, I don't know what he wanted, an elevator, I guess. Like, what would you... Yeah, something. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what he expected. Uh, but they they end up making three guys carry him up the stairs in his wheelchair to look at the cow for two seconds and then make him carry him back down. Which I thought, it was just, everything about it was very... I don't know, it's just so uncomfortable yet really funny at all yeah. at the same time you know it, it is I, I think it's stuff like that especially uh, coming from somebody who's disabled like that's just very relatable like the uh time uh, how is it that expression like comedy is tragedy plus time yeah yeah like yeah the situation that's a terribly awkward situation <sighs> but that's comedy gold yeah <laughs> do you uh, does it frustrate you yeah. when things are not more accessible for you? Um, I, I tend to be a bit more understanding and a bit more rational when it comes to certain things like that. But I can, uh, I, I guess I'm really laid back is how I am. But I'm not so laid back that I don't think that there shouldn't be changes and regulations. Like I recently started uh trying to talk about the uh I guess teaching more of the social etiquettes mm -hmm. and those small little like I guess people would call them uh mi microaggressions. I don't like the term mm. just but uh just more little things in that nature because as much progression as we've made with like race and sex and gender and whatnot, which is great, you know, fantastic. There's also this really huge gap in, in like, people with disabilities. And I feel that is a, a door that should be opened a bit more and talked about. Mm. What would you like to see different? Um, well, like I said, it, it, I guess there's definitely a bit of an issue when uh, people can <laughs> feel it okay and, like, socially acceptable to stop somebody who's in a wheelchair for no reason in the middle of their day to be like, hey, I'm going to, let's stop what you're doing and let's pray real quick. Mm. Let's pray for you to get better. Yeah. And it's like, I, I get that's coming from a, a place where you think you're doing good, but it's it's not. It's, <laughs> it's terribly uncomfortable. Yeah. So, like, things like that. I feel just need to be reevaluated, need to stop. And obviously when it comes to places being accessible, I think every place should be. Yeah. Uh, if you can afford it, if, and if it's necessary, like it's, I understand why that's even like a, a debate for people sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mostly, would you say mostly it's it more in the social aspect or is, do you think you're neglected in Society, I guess if that, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I'd say. And I, I don't mean. It's a bit more. I don't, yeah. I'm not trying to make you a victim or anything like that because I don't, that's not how I see no, it. I just. Exactly. I think that's my big issue is that I don't want to come off as a victim, but in a way that you have to talk about things, you do come off as a victim. Yeah. And I think the, the, the problem now in 2018 is uh, everybody likes to be a victim mm. for the most part. Yeah. We, we, we all seem to make these mountains out of molehills, if you will. Yeah. And that's where I try and find a balance of like, I'm not saying I have it like terrible, but I'm saying the issues that are here are worth talking about, are worth discussing and are worth trying to change. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. No, but yeah, I think that's fair. Like, I definitely can see how people can, you know, treat you differently, treat you maybe not as less, but as different. Like, oh, you are, you are separate mm -hmm. from everyone else. Like I see it the same with my daughter 
where it's yeah there's a, a so I, I have three daughters and the oldest has down syndrome the other two don't and the other two get a lot more uh respect if that makes sense like yeah. a, just as a person yeah um and the other my oldest kind of gets more written off and it's like oh that's not really fair guys like i get that it's not intentional i get that it's not malicious but it still happens mm-hmm. i think it's important to, to point out and i think it's important to point out without uh, attacking because like you were saying people everyone wants to be a victim right like you have yeah. you have to recognize when it's malicious and if that's the case then yes fight back and fight hard and don't let that happen but when Absolutely. it's when it's out of ignorance or it's out of you know especially when it's out of them trying to do the right thing and they just do it the wrong way like that stuff yes. should just be corrected gently like hey i get what you're doing but like maybe take an extra second to think about it or consider this like there's no reason to make those people whose desire is for good to turn them into the enemy. Like Exactly. You know. <clears throat> but No, you're a hundred percent right. What did you think is your desire to pee off of uh the deepest pit, does that seem like that would fulfill your life? Did you relate to that moment in the movie? Sorry, that was a hard shift in the conversation, but No. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, uh, I love this shit, dude. I uh I, I think something with it like that, it's a good kind of, there's a word or terminology I'm looking for, but it, it, it reflects well on the basis that that might not seem like a big of a deal to anybody else, mm. but for somebody who's in a position where like that couldn't be as easy, it's something to be dreamed of. Yeah. It's like a, it's, it's this mystical, like, yeah, that's fucking amazing. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a kind of a good, uh, thing to look at it as, as, uh, it might not seem like that big of a deal, but it is. Yeah. Uh, to, but to answer your question, I would love to pee off the, uh, <laughs> the world's biggest <laughs> pit. It would be fucking great. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think what this movie does so well is it shows Ben, Paul Rudd's character, actually seeing Trevor. Like he doesn't, Mm -hmm. you can tell he doesn't see him as, oh, just a kid in a wheelchair or, oh, this is just my job that I have to do. Like he's like, he, he, he seems to be one of the few. And obviously there's not a lot of people that interact with Trevor. And actually everyone who does interact with Trevor for the most part treats him really well, which maybe this movie could have, uh, had a little bit more commentary on that, uh, on the opposite side. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think. The representation of how well he was treated is probably accurate. I don't, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just making stuff up, but. I, no, I can see where you're coming from because like, I guess my mom always instilled in me, uh, people would treat you the way you allow them to treat you. Mm. And if, uh, as somebody who is, is, you know, mentally able, uh, just not as physically able with them, yeah. would be okay with them being treated as somebody who, you know, like a child, yeah. even though that's not okay, mm. obviously. Uh, people are going to continue to treat that way. But if you start, you know, giving them shit, busting their chops a bit, like he does, yeah. it, people will, you know, automatically treat you different. Yeah. Do you find that it's easier to be more aggressive? With stuff like that, with being sarcastic up front, that it like disarms people. Um. Well, like you said, I love making people uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes I know my limit uh, when uh, mu- too much is a little too much. Mm-hmm. But if if I can make it friendly and I can make it like some banter, I'm totally okay with it, and I feel real good about doing yeah. it because. That that's your expectations being flipped upside down. Yeah, and I love doing that to people. Yeah, yeah I think, I think, like, th- I think this movie does a really good job at showing, like, just because he's in a wheelchair doesn't really mean he's any different, other than what mm-hmm. he's able to do physically. Like he, yeah, he's consistent uh, with everyone else. You know, on, he's on the same level of wittiness, and you know. uh being sarcastic and being mean and being funny. Like there, everyone is on the same level with that. 
And I think it, you watch the movie and it's easy to forget that he's even in a wheelchair a lot of times. Like it's, it's a part of the story, but it's not, it's not what the story the is. Story. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's what was so well done about it. There was a great balance of things and even the things that you think would be unbalanced actually turned out to be, again, really balanced. Yeah. Do you, Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> <I'm not... laughs> That's a dumb question. Yeah. I was going to say, no, no. okay, so this, I, I, I think this is dumb. I'll just say that now. But <laughs> when you think of things like Black Panther, right? And representation in movies, does that, yeah. does that ever cross your mind? Do you ever think like, oh, I wish there was a superhero in a wheelchair? I mean, I guess there's, what's her name in DC? Uh, but. Uh, but- Oracle. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The Oracle. But like, I don't know. Does that does that ever cross your mind? Is that something that ever you consider? Is that something you want to see, or does that? Well, see, I think that's actually. I guess there's a valid question to ask, Professor X, because uh, the, you think okay with with me, yep. personally. Mm-hmm. This is just coming from my perspective. I never understood the the notion of representation yeah. all the way. I can give it to some degree. It's like, yeah, it's cool to be able to look at something on screen, whether it be a film, TV show, video game, whatever, mm. and see like, oh, I can relate to that because I'm kind of like that. But but to me, my my whole notion of like watching movies, TV, video games, that's an escape mm. from reality. Yeah. Like that, that's my, like, I don't want to think about my shit because there's a lot going on that I want to forget about. And I'm going to take this, uh, little bit of time for myself to ex- just forget about that. Like, I don't want to be reminded <laughs> all the time that, like, yeah, being in a wheelchair is a thing. It's not that I haven't coped with it. It's just, you know, sometimes I want a little bit of fun. Mm. You know, I, I can relate to a character without, you know, them being in a wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, cause that's just, human nature. I have empathy. Yeah. I can feel for somebody who's uh, black or able-bodied or a woman. Like, and that's just how I am. So uh, I I guess it's, it's not a huge deal to me, mm-hmm. but I can see where that could be a big deal to maybe somebody a bit younger yeah. who, who do look up to people like that in a certain way. Uh, so I don't know. Me personally, I don't need it. Yeah. But I guess if there was going to be something that had that character, uh, do it authentically mm. as much as you can. Yeah. Um. So throughout this movie, they're going on a road trip, and they keep picking up people. They pick up Selena Gomez, who is Dot. They pick up uh, this woman who is pregnant, whose car broke down, and they're mm-hmm. they're going on this journey to, uh, one, go to the pit, but it really turns into him confronting his dad. And doing that, they, Paul Rudd and uh, Trevor, Ben and Trevor, they, so Trevor meets his dad, his dad's a jerk, and he's like, doesn't care about him. They go outside, and uh, Ben and Trevor have this great, I think, really strong emotional moment of, where Trevor's mad because he's he feels broken from his dad and Ben is sorry and they're fighting and it comes out that or well we know at this point but Ben's son had died and Trevor feels like you are just trying to use me to replace your son and Ben's like that that's not even possible like I that's not something that I'm trying to do that's not something that I expect to do like Mm-hmm. There, <clears throat> the this movie does is so layered with emotions and things going on. Um, I, I don't know. I I just really appreciate everything they did in it. Yeah, because I mean, when you first look at it, it's easy to write it off as like, oh, this is just going to be a film that you know, Paul Rudd's taking care of this boy in a wheelchair. He's probably a little witty, and then at the end of the film. He's gonna fucking die, and it's gonna be this emotional roller coaster of like, oh, fucking the cripple kid. He's normal, 
all along, but now he's dead because yeah. health issues. Yeah. <laughs> like that could have been the total easy Hallmark lifetime movie route to go. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But they didn't. They didn't go that right. And I really appreciate that because, uh, for most of the time in media, whenever there is a person with a disability, they're usually the fun, loving, charming, you know, like tee hee character. And they always end up dying. Yeah. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make you feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, the, this movie, uh, I noticed there's a lot of moments that are on pace with normal movies that, mm-hmm. like when he pretends like he forgot the medicine in the hotel. Yeah. That, that, that pay, that beat is a common one, right? Like things are going good. Things are going good. Oh no, something bad has to happen to, you know, add conflict back into the story. But this movie's like, yep. nope, just kidding. You know, like tricked you. It's still, it's, it feels like it's constantly moving up, even though it's playing with your emotions and it like, it, it, it's like almost like a red herring, uh, bad event. Yeah. It's still, it's like constantly good. Absolutely. Like that part in particular, that's something, uh, I, I saw it coming a mile away, but I didn't see the twist where it was like, no, nah, I'm fucking with yeah. you. That's the thing. Like, that's what took me through the loop. It's like the whole time I was waiting for like, any minute now, something bad's going to happen. His health, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it didn't end up happening. Yeah. Did not end up happening. And I I was really happy about that. Yeah. No, I, I really appreciate it. I, I thought it was... The, just everything that they did, I thought was great. Um, so during their trip, Selena Gomez and Trevor, they start building a relationship. Mm-hmm. Has that been, is that difficult for you? Do you think it's more or less difficult for you than other people? Cause, Sorry. no, no worries. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, cause I think everyone struggles with relationships, right? Like it's, Everyone feels out of their depth. Everyone feels lost. But do you think being in a wheelchair adds an extra element to that? No, it absolutely does. Um, because being in the position where you have to put yourself out there, and usually when it comes to a relationship, you only want to show the best of yourself. You want to present yourself to this person and like a, hey, this is what I have to offer. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's, it's a hard to do that sometimes when you have that physical thing that just makes you look like you are not on par with on everybody else. Mm-hmm. And so in that case, I felt like I always had to go a bit above and beyond. I've always had to try a bit harder, uh, where like the insecurities you can't show that, mm-hmm. not right away, at least. Yeah. And that's just, that's a, that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not impossible. Uh, that, that's, I guess, my big point with, uh, people that complain constantly about not being able to, uh, find, uh, either somebody like to date or be intimate with, mm-hmm. like, if I can do it, you can do it too. You're fine. Yeah. You just, you, you need to stop being weird or <laughs> complaining or just be a, be a human being yeah. and you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sick of pity? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> I think that's why it's so easy for people to be aggressive when they're in a, uh, in a wheelchair or just have any disability because you get it so often that even the times when, like, it's not malicious, like you said, mm. it can still rub you up the wrong way, and you're like, dude, fuck. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was I was telling you that I live in Thailand, and when I go into a store, I have about five people surrounding me trying to help me shop, and it makes me yeah. crazy. I'm like, just let me yeah. let me ask for help, please. Like, give me, give me an inch to breathe. Let me ask for help. And I can't imagine yeah. how much more aggressive that would feel in a, being in a wheelchair. Like are people yeah. constantly just trying to do things for you? Um, it's either too much or too little. Yeah. 
it doesn't feel like there's a in, in between stage. It's really funny. Uh, and I guess in a scenario like that, I, I would rather be asked too much okay. than not at all. Yeah. But that's just me personally. Yeah. Uh, I, I can totally understand if like you're capable of doing something and people are just always on your back. Like, Hey, do you want me to do this? Is it fine? Like, let's not helping somebody really. It's just, uh, I get it's coming from a good place again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I understand that. I think it's just more people wanting to make sure they are doing fine and okay. But I, I don't imagine a world where I'm going out all the time and people are just hand and feet over me. Like that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anything else about this movie? I feel like we covered a lot of it. We didn't really go through the story super well, but. Well, you know, I I think, again, the ending. I appreciate the ending Mm. a lot more than, uh, your, your typical traditional, what you would expect this movie to do. Again, I, I totally was prepared for this dude to die. Yeah. The whole movie. Mm -hmm. Totally. And, in that mental space of like, yep, he's dead. Uh, that, and I think the producers or the director or somebody, whoever was in charge of the storytelling was ready to take that route. And they, or they knew people were going to be expecting that, that they decided to throw that in as a bit of a joke yeah. again. Yeah. Where Paul Rudd is writing his, his story finally, <laughs> or sub, uh, and he writes as if, like, he had died. Yeah. But then he's like, nope, oh, just kidding. So when I saw that the first time, the way I took it was that was accurate, right? That he he died, mm-hmm. or that he, he pretended to die, the lady freaked out, and then quit. The second time I right. watched it, <laughs> the way it felt was that he actually did die, but Paul Rudd was like, you know what? The, his story is that he lived on type of thing. And I, I, th- mm-hmm. I think accurately he's still alive in that movie. But the second time I, I it felt like, Oh, maybe he is dead and Paul Rudd. Cause like there's that weird moment after he typed that he would, he had died and then he like sat there for a minute and then he like typed the rest where it felt like, Oh, maybe he is dead. But no, I totally, I totally agree that. The, the movie putting forward the idea like, this is what you expect. You expect him to be dead. Cause he even gives a speech about, oh, he'll be lucky to live until he's 30 type of thing when he's talking to Dot's mm-hmm. dad. And then, you know, you, you, you're ready for that to happen. You're like, okay, this is, this is normal for a movie to like pull at your heartstrings right at the end. But the consistency Absolutely. of Trevor just being a jerk all the time was great, <laughs> you know, that he would pretend to be dead and just to prank the, the caregiver. Yeah. Uh, it <clears throat> absolutely is right on par with who he is a, a, as a character. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it, it was just extremely done well. And I, I think is wh- whoever was doing their, their studying on, a person with a disability like that really went above and beyond because mm. it would be totally easy to write them off as like just that haha sarcastic witty person in a wheelchair because I get that a lot too. Like I get a lot of people that end up seeing this movie and then being like, "Dude, you're you're totally like this guy." Oh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I I get that. I totally understand because with a uh, humor uh, <laughs> has been a the biggest coping mechanism with, uh, dark shit like that in my life. Yeah. And, uh, that's how you end up becoming. It's either <laughs> you, you let the hard shit in life really break you and you just feel sorry for yourself all the time. Mm. Or you, uh, you realize that there's some things in life that you can't control and it's cool to even be alive in the first place. So like, m- make it, as good as you can while you can. Yeah. 
What do you, the, that's not that's it. what do you, how do you feel about all the pranks that Trevor would play? A part of me, like the app of me that always wants to fuck with people yeah. loves that. <laughs> I loved it. But, but the other half of me that's like kind of a decent person <laughs> is like, dude, I don't think I could do that. No. <laughs> like the faking, the faking choking thing. Yeah. I could probably do that with like my close friends, mm. but even that I probably wouldn't because yeah. that's a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like the, the things of like making them uncomfortable in public yeah. and stuff like that. Oh no, I totally yeah. do that. I love the, uh, yeah. the park scene in the beginning where mm-hmm. Trevor is screaming about his wheelchair being defective and he's like going back and forth and like asking for help, asking for help. And Ben's just sitting there reading his book. And that woman is just yeah. horrified watching everything going on. Like, it's, it was great. Yeah. It was so fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, I, I super appreciate you taking the time. I hope I didn't ask anything that was offensive or anything like that. Oh, God. No, you were going to have to try a lot harder to offend me. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll do that for next time. Please. <laughs> but yeah, so can you tell me about your YouTube channel? Yeah, um, you can find me at uh, Young Crit TV, where I uh, I don't know what category I get called commentary, but I don't do too many like popular event things. Like I, I just kind of do whatever feels right. I do a few reviews now and then. I'll get my thoughts and opinions on something I feel I could add to the conversation instead of just repeating. What everybody else is saying, but uh, I mean, it's mostly yeah, Logan Paul drama. I think that you cover, right? That's da- yeah. I actually only talk <laughs> about Logan Paul. It's I I love Logan Paul. Yeah, he's my favorite. I'm the number one Logan Paul fan. You're the number one Loganger. What are, what would you be yeah. if you're in the Low Gang? What's the uh, oh Maverick? Is that uh, what he calls them? That's what they're Mavericks are in that? the Low Gang. I think. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah that's me i'm the number one little game maverick all of it on everything yeah no but you you definitely have a great channel um your videos are you know consistently well done i, I really appreciate watching them i appreciate that this point. i really do and uh yeah so you can follow us on twitter at i seen that pod and on Facebook, and we will be back uh, in a couple days.